And we continue with the Advent series with the third Thursday of Advent, December 15th. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are on, on the topics here. And let me know how you're enjoying or not enjoying the series. Are we on a repeat? Have we come to the end and have gone back up and begun trung the same wretched course as before? We already had Kennedy in the Camelot era, the Johnson presidency, the paranoia of Nixon, and the whatever you want to call Ford's time in office. Well, we've been through quite a lot. Let's hope to God we never see that again. In 2008, I was a sophomore at UNC Greensboro. I just entered my fall semester and declared my major in broadcasting and cinema with a focus on film and video production. I also declared a second major in international and global studies because it made mother happy. In retrospect, I thought it was a good call. I never voted before, so this election year would be my first. I saw there was a bus taking the students uptown to vote and I hopped in. <laughs> I even called my friend and joked I was being kidnapped by the Obama bus. And I voted for Obama because I was young and was part of the change wave. We all needed it after eight years of Bush, who seemed very much to me like old LBJ. I mean, both were Texans and both got marred in a war that seemed to be going nowhere after a fervent start. Obama was, for me... Kennedy, and he was going to fix our country and put it on the right path again. When he won the election, I was working at the college TV station, and we were covering the election results. I mean, you had to be there. The campus was awash in light. The energy was exhilarating. The rain couldn't damp the spirit of the youth that gathered outside of the cafeteria. Car horns were blaring as people chanted and danced. So, this is what liberation feels like. I pondered. God, what a time to be alive. Even if you were a conservative or Republican, you had to admit there was an air about it that was electric, the kind that we may never see again. Lightning in a bottle, I suppose. Like Kennedy, Obama was the figurehead of the youth, the millennial, the man who understood that our generation was the future of this country. I don't know about that now, said this self-hating millennial. When Trump came to office, it was an entirely different atmosphere. There was fear in the air, and people who once stood triumphant were now running for the hills. Was it Nixonian? I certainly thought so. Was Trump being calculating or just winging it? Was he a friend of dictators or was he getting them right where he wanted? I could never tell. And let's not forget the White House had become a revolving door of staffers and secretaries coming in and out. It's like Rex Tillerson was barely in office before he was on the out. And he certainly was not Kissinger by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, those four years certainly made me scratch my head. They said it would be hell, but I never experienced it. I remember people telling me they'd hightail it to Canada until this all blows over, but what's the point? We expected the sky to fall, but things just carried on. And yet there was a sense of dread and uneasiness that couldn't be easily shaken off. I didn't feel at all threatened, but... There were those who felt that way and just spoke really loudly. And now, there's Biden. What can we say about Joey? He's bumbling about, stumbling, trying his darndest but falling short. In some cases, literally. He's very much a Gerald Ford. I've said it to friends and co-workers and I say it now again. He's as equally bumbling as our 38th president without the benefit of being a Michigan fan. And things in the country aren't on the up, that's for sure, and no one's wearing bell-bottoms and the music is awful that you wish you were deaf. My only consolation is that at some point, once we've 
going through Pseudo Carter. I'm thinking that'll be Pence and a Reagan-like figure, an articulate Hollywood actor, which is more and more likely by the day. We end up in a decade very much like the 1960s and 1990s. I'll be old, uh, assuming I'm still around, but if we do come back to a 1990s-like decade, I'll know it. The nostalgia will be real, people, and it will make me cry as well as laugh. But then we'll have to deal with a Clinton-like president who's forced to admit they did have sex with an intern in the Oval Office and then it gets slampooned on SNL.